Intel finally launches their GPU. It's here. What's also here is a Gran Turismo movie and we might know when the next AMD GPUs are coming out. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And finally, as I mentioned at the top of the program, Intel has launched their GPUs. The ARC A380 has come out in China only. Good stuff. Intel kind of already told us that this was going to be their plan. They don't have enough stock to ship these everywhere. They launched their GPUs in their laptops and those only started selling in Korea and then China and they still kind of haven't made their way over here to the US. It is unknown when we are getting these cards, but we do have some good indication on pricing and performance, which is something Intel hasn't really been talking about. So the ARC A380 is more of a lower end GPU, which is totally fine, especially when you consider the price is roughly $150 after VAT tax or about $134 before tax. So that puts it firmly in the low end GPU region, GTX 1630, RX 6400, and you can see the GPU here. It's going to have GDDR6, PCI Express 4.0, AV1 Decode, Intel Deep Link, all of the great features that you're expecting. Day zero exploits baked in from the beginning. I think that's probably supposed to say day zero drivers, but as we've seen from Intel stuff, drivers aren't their strong suit. <laughs> So it's going to have six gigs of memory, 192 gigabyte per second memory bandwidth, a pretty decent setup, two gigahertz on the GPU with eight Z cores in there, eight ray tracing cores as well. And they also came out with some benchmarks specifically comparing it to the RX 6400. So the 6400, according to this report, sells for about 15% more than the ARC A380 in China. And then at 1080p medium, Intel showed off its performance in a few different games. In F1 2021, it was 20 26% faster, Rust 24% faster, Total Saga Troy 22%, The Witcher 3 22%, Metro Exodus 18%, Wolfenstein Youngblood 15%, and in Destiny 2 14%. So taking all of that into account, the pricing of the 6400 and the extra performance of the A380 GPU, Intel is saying that it delivers up to 25% better performance per yuan or per currency. So hopefully it does continue to be that way as it makes itself available around the world that it's still 25% better than AMD's low end. I will say the one thing I'm going to give tons of credit to Intel here for and continue to crap on AMD for is the fact that Intel is actually providing a fully fledged GPU here. It has AV1 decode and encode, which is something AMD is not even doing for H.264 on the RX 6400. You have a PCI Express 4.0 GPU with only four lanes. This, as far as I'm aware, actually uses more lanes. Number two, it gives you all of the H.264 and H.265 encode and decode options. This is a much better all around graphics card for doing anything on your computer, whereas the RX 6400 is barely competent at just gaming. And that is a frustration point I've had with the 6400. It's that's why I was excited for the GTX 1630. And if we could eventually get the A380 here, I'm going to be very excited for this. It seems like a very, very good low end launch from Intel, considering the state of the market. I would hope that this would be closer to $100 right now here in 2022, considering where we were in 2020. But given the current market, as I'm saying, I like this, but let me know what you think of the A380 down below in the comments. But we also got images of the first third party cards. Gunny are coming out with their Photon A380, as you can see right here. It's a pretty decent looking GPU. I like the design. It has an eight pin power connector. Looks really good. They also teased a high end A770 version uh, until not coming out with a release date on that. But it looks like this is going to be a triple fan solution, which makes sense for a higher end card. But in Intel, finally, desktop GPUs, they're here-ish on the other side of the world, but they're being released, which is great. It's good to see at least Intel's benchmarks look good, even if Intel's GPU is the exact same in performance as the 6400, AMD should be forced to bury that GPU in the ground because it provides no advantage at all because it's a worse overall piece of crap. Sorry, mm, we're never getting sponsored by AMD anyways, but you know who's sponsoring today's episode of Hot News? 
let, uh, let me tell you about it. Today's episode of Hot News is sponsored by Brilliant. My friends, I'm constantly a fan of learning and improving myself, and Brilliant is a great way to do that because the best way to learn anything is by doing it yourself. You can learn interactively with Brilliant's fun, hands-on lessons in math, science, and computer science. Interactive learning helps you learn six times more effectively than watching lecture videos. So if you're trying to learn computer science fundamentals and programming, I actually start off by helping you teach a mail truck how to make deliveries. And Brilliant's great because it's for all ability and knowledge levels. So you should be able to find something that interests you, whether you're a master, whether you're a novice, you can find topics in foundational math or in advanced math, depending on where your skill set level is. And I know if you're a lover of hot news, you love technology. And so things like their computer science foundation course, which goes through computer science fundamentals, algorithm fundamentals, data structures, and introduction to neural nets so that you can better understand what we're talking about as we discuss things here on Hot News. It's a good way to up your knowledge, but then also interact so that you actually retain more. And Brilliant will actually provide you with clear and intuitive explanations of what you're learning so that you can understand why the concept actually matters, what it's all about with those interactive visuals. Rather than just solving repetitive problems, they teach you the intuitive ideas behind the topics like algorithms, statistics, algebra, and much more. And you can get started for free. You can join the millions of people already learning on Brilliant with a special offer just for viewers of Hot News. You can go to brilliant.org forward slash hot news to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. The first 200 people who click the link will also get 20% off on an annual membership. Again, that's brilliant.org forward slash hot news to check out Brilliant. Start learning interactively in a fun way that actually helps you to retain what you learn in subject matters that are actually really useful. Big thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. Now let's go ahead and talk about the crypto stonks. The Bitcoin market, uh, it's had a little bit of a bouncy day down to 2.27% on the day to be at 21,680. It had a point where it nearly dropped below $20,000, which I think is a mental threshold for a lot of people. They don't want Bitcoin to go under 20 grand. So it recovered from that, especially with the Fed finally announcing that it's going to raise interest rates by 0.75. I think a lot of people were selling off prematurely for that just in case the rate hike was actually even more 1% or higher. But the fact that it hasn't means that it has rebounded ever so slightly to be in that 21,000 and a half region. Ethereum also down 2.6% to be at 1173. Dogecoin, however, up 6% on the day. I should probably check and see if Elon Musk tweeted about it. It's at 5.8 cents. GameStop also up 2% on the day to be at roughly $130 as the market is closing. Still doing pretty gosh dang well. Also, we got some gosh dang good tech deals for you. Respring you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. We have this LG 27 inch 1080p 240 hertz IPS panel going for $227 right now. That is a savings of 35%. LG Ultra Gear, a pretty good gaming brand. I really like these monitors. In case you're in the market for 1080p 240 hertz, this is pretty gosh dang good price. And what probably won't be a good price is the PS5 Pro controller that is now being anticipated. A well known leaker on the PlayStation and console side of things is indicating that. Sony has a pro controller in development with all of the features you would expect, like paddles and removable thing, the analog sticks and trigger stops and all of the fancy schmancy stuff that you could possibly want. No indication on real release date or pricing, just that it's in development. My guess it's probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $150 to $200, especially considering the price of the Xbox Elite controller and the fact that the DualSense already cost $70. Bucks. I would hope it's $100, but I'm, I'm not going to be naive enough to say that maybe they'll launch it alongside the PSVR 2, which we're expecting to potentially have a holiday release date. I'm kind of excited for it. I probably won't buy it, but you know, it'll be an option. What's also an option is for you to put your eyeballs on a Gran Turismo movie, which Sony is now announcing to come out in 2023 and be directed by Neil Blomkamp, the guy who did District 9 and Chappie. Kyler, did you hear about this? Yeah, he's doing a Gran Turismo movie. I don't, I don't know. They just decided he's the best person, okay? Did a future alien dystopian robot stuff? Racing cars on a PlayStation. It's going to be about somebody who was good at Gran Turismo and then became a real race car driver. I, I couldn't. I could not have predicted this at all. And could you have predicted that Apple's M2 chip is going to be faster than their M1 chip? Good. 
I'm glad you're paying attention because it is. And then we have new benchmarks coming out that aren't from Apple. Geekbench scores of the M2 showing up for the first time. Apple claims that the CPU should be roughly 18% faster than the M1. This does tend to align with the Geekbench score that we're seeing 11% faster in single core and 19.45% faster in multi core, which is roughly around that 18% setup. Pretty decent. The M2 MacBook Pro should be coming out next Friday, and then the M2 MacBook Airs are supposed to be released in July, so you'll be able to get a faster setup. Good stuff. I mean, 18% year-on-year improvement for a company that just started making their own chips in computers? I'm happy with it. And are you happy with the state of GPU stuff? I don't know. We're getting a new launch, the, the new rumor that the RX 7000 series is gonna come out sometime between October and November. That's that's late October, no later than mid-November is the uh, announcement from Greymon, the well-known leaker. GPU is coming out. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna go in. I'm not gonna come out, I'm gonna go in to the recesses of not doing hot news. I'll see you back here for another episode tomorrow, my friends.